Yo, what's up my fellow creatives? Adrian Boycell here. Welcome back to another video. As I told you, I'm going to be making a lot of videos here on the channel from this point forward. I'm actually in my home studio now, so I'm not in my fancy office with the wall and all that fancy stuff, but I'm going to make a powerful video for you guys today about the brand archetypes. Now, there are 12 brand archetypes that you need to be thinking about and knowing within your business. You need to be helping your clients understand this. You can use this for your own brand, and this is going to help you dif help you differentiate yourself between you and everybody else in the marketplace which is really hard to do nowadays with all the noise all the social media and all the polarizing people that we have out there so this is gonna be a big help so let's jump right into it so who are you that's the first question you should be asking yourself you should be asking your clients and you really need to understand on a deep level you need to know who you are and what makes you different and what is the experience like when people are dealing with you? Are you funny? Are you more rebellious? Are you soft and caring and loving? Are you an encourager? Are you an authoritarian and you wanna just get your way, right? That doesn't make you bad. Everybody's got their own unique personalities and you need to be authentic to yourself. And the way you're gonna discover that is by going back and looking at your past and by talking to people in your circle, your family, your friends, your cousins, your clients, your colleagues, and the people that you have in your community. If you don't have community, you need to get community. This is why I've created the Instagraphics Pro Network and it's part of my community. So these are the 12 brand archetypes and this is the starting place of knowing who you are and who your clients are and making sure you ask them that question. Why is this too important? Well, great brands have high consumer awareness. They create strong brand loyalty. Look at companies like Nike, look at companies like Liquid Death. All right, look what I'm doing. I'm drinking Liquid Death now on a regular basis. Never thought in a million years I'd be ever drinking this water. In fact, I laughed at it when I first saw it and said, I'll never drink that. Well, never say never, right? We need to build trust and brands that build trust are really less susceptible to price comparison. The clients that I work with today are not the same type of clients that I worked with years ago. As I've evolved my brand, as I become more polarizing and become more clear and become more uh, authentic to who I am as a person, I've started to attract better and better clients that pay me more and more money. And that's what you want to do as well. I know you do. All right, so here is the golden goose. This is the benefits. Let me just try to move this guy out of the way so you can see this. We'll have to move that here in just a minute. It's kind of funny how my face is over the magician. But these are the 12 archetypes. The creator, the caregiver, the ruler, the hero, the rebel, the magician, the jester, the orphan, the lover, the innocent, the sage, and the explorer. Now, these are the 12 main archetypes. And every single one of these you'll see here has a goal. They have a flaw and they have a skill. There's other people that have done stuff around the archetypes and the 12 different ones. I've seen some cool ones out there, but I like to keep mine simple. You don't need to overcomplicate this. What I like to tell my clients and what I'll tell you today is you need to pick one primary and then have one secondary. You're not just one person. I've had some people tell me I'm all of these and I'm like, okay, no, you're not. Nobody can be all of these. If you're all these, you're none of these. And so you're not going to stand out. You're not going to be unique. You're not going to have your own voice. So if you look at the companies like I like to deal with, whether it's the Fox brands or Lions Not Sheep, you've seen me wear in my previous videos. That is the rebel brand. That is a big part of my brand of who I am. I ride motocross. I challenge the status quo. I say, you know what, to vaccinations. I, I'm not into all that stuff. I have my own personality and I stand for freedom. I'm a libertarian. I stand for peace. And I'm not going to let anybody tell me what to do or how to take care of my family when I know what to do, right? So I'm that rebel personality, but I'm also the creator. So sometimes I bounce back and forth of these, but at, ultimately at the end of the day, what brings me passion, what brings me joy, what brings me fulfillment is being the creator, whether that's creating new content, creating new books, creating new articles, creating new websites, creating new brands. I love creating for my clients. So being a creator is a really big deal for me. I'm working on other things right now, other projects where I'm creating. And this is what I love to do more than anything. The rebel is part of that for me, but the main one, my primary is the creator. Now, what is the goal of a creator? It's to realize a vision. If you're like me, you have these visions and you want to see this vision come to life. My wife's business, Crunchy Cottage, came to life because she is a creator and and just like me but we saw this vision and i helped her bring this brand to life she also has the rebel archetype but she's also the caregiver so she's a creator and a rebel but a caregiver but her personality type is more along the caregiver than it is the rebel so for me my flaw is perfectionism i'll tend to overthink things and over plan things and i want to get it perfect before i launch it this is an area that i've worked on for many many years to just get it out there because progress is more important than perfection progress is more important than perfection now my skill is my imagination the ideas that I come up with that's what clients come to me because they want to learn and they want to utilize the skills that I have to help them within their businesses 
I give them these ideas and strategies that they couldn't figure out themselves because I have imagination. I have this creativity. I think a lot of the times from the eyes of a 10 year old, a 15 year old, a 20 year old, I'm able to see the world from different perspectives. It's just a God given gift. So that's my skill. If you're the caregiver, your goal is to help others. Your flaw is martyrdom. My wife is very guilty of this. She's martyred herself in, in many situations trying to help people where it's cost her money, it's cost her time, it's cost her stress, it's cost her tears, it's even cost her blood, right? She's willing to do anything to help her people. And the skill that she has is compassion. I've never met a woman that's more compassionate than her. So you can look through these and decide for yourself which one is most applicable to you and then pick a secondary. So this is gonna help you really define your core personality, your unique elements that are gonna be true to you. All right, so the next part to this is giving you some examples. So you may not, you may not be 100% clear still on who you are. Well, I wanted to create some examples of who, maybe these are some people that you love in your life that you attribute to. For me, one of my favorite human beings that ever walked this planet was Lucille Ball. I grew up with my grandma who watched Lucy and it was all Lucy and Ricky Ricardo and the funny jokes and the humors and the sketches. That to me was the greatest comedian and the, one of the greatest people on TV that ever lived. She was an innovator. She pioneered the industry for women. She was a leader. She was hilarious. So for me, I really love Lucille Ball. She's one of my favorite humans. And then you have Mozart and you have Elvis, another one of my favorite people. Elvis was a king and my grandma and I love to listen to Elvis together. You're, if you're the caregiver, you might like Mrs. Doubtfire or Mary Poppins or Obi-Wan, right? If you're the ruler, you might be into Donald Trump, you know, make America great again, or Daenerys Targaryen or the Queen of England who's no longer with us. Um, if you're the hero, you're into the Jon Snows, the people that are willing to fall on the sword and die for people, right? You got the Harry Potters, the Wonder Womans, the Revolutionary and the Rebels like me, you got the Lincolns, right? I literally have on my laptop, check this out. If this could not be any more accurate to who I am, I literally have, whoops, let's go this way. I have Abraham Lincoln wearing sunglasses. There we go. Right on my laptop. That's because I, I love Abraham Lincoln. I think he was one of the greatest human beings that ever lived and also an amazing president. Now, obviously he has his shortcomings like everybody else, but him, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, right? These are the rebels that said no. They challenged the status quo and they didn't go with the mainstream. You have the magicians, the jesters, right? I love Will Ferrell's, the Charlie Chaplin's, uh, the every person, the Dave Thomas, the lover, the innocent, the explorer, and the sage. If you might just be a person that carries just a lot of wisdom, you do a lot of reading, you have a lot of knowledge. I put my brother into that category. He is the sage. So these are gonna be really helpful for you as reference points. And if you ever want to, you can go to Google, you can use ChatGPT, you can do all kinds of things and tell it, I want you to write this article in the, in the archetype of the sage, in the archetype of the explorer. And you can even get more specific and say in the voice of Donald Trump or in the style of Donald or of Forrest Gump or in the style of Dave Thomas, right? And it'll actually pull their data from the internet and from other places and actually write that content you want it to write in that style so that it's authentic to you where you can save a lot of time and get a lot of your, your time back. All right, so when it comes to branding, this is an important piece that I want you to make sure you understand. Part of your brand is if you think about Donald Trump, right? You're thinking about his voice. I am the greatest president that God ever created, right? I know that sounds terrible. It's not the greatest Donald Trump impression, but you're thinking about how he sounds. You're thinking about how he looks. You're thinking about how he carries himself. You're thinking about the things that he wears and the hat, the MAGA hat, right? These are all things that are engaging your senses, things you need to be thinking about inside of your brand. Of how can you create these pieces? Brands are experienced in five different ways. That is sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. What does Donald Trump smell like? I don't want to know, right? Let's not go there. But the sight, you know what he looks like. You, he's very signature. He's got the hair thing that people thought he had a toupee or whatever. He makes a certain sound with his voice. Touch, right? He's always touching people and inappropriate things, right? And then you have smell and taste. These are all areas. What does Donald Trump taste like? I don't know. We probably don't want to go there either. But there's a taste maybe to some of his products, right? His steakhouses, his food, right? What is cologne? I know he probably has a Donald Trump cologne, right? These are all core signatures of his brand and I keep I apologize for keeping using Donald Trump I'm not a huge Donald Trump fan but I feel like it's a polarizing character that has done a very good job as a marketer at the end of the day he's a reality TV show host that's done an amazing job as his, as a brand he's got Trump buildings and Trump towers and Trump real estate and Trump products and Trump stakes it's endless right so he's done a very good job branding himself he may not have been the greatest person or greatest president of all time but he's been a great brand you can't deny that so i want you guys to be able to take some elements from people and companies and brands that you love that you have an affinity to 
Look at the companies in your life that you're buying from. Is it Liquid Death? Is it Yerba Mate? Is it Samsung? Is it Apple? What are those companies that you're spending your time and your hard money investing into? Is it Adobe, right? What are the archetypes of those brands? And reverse engineer for yourself. I think these are really key areas that you can find some gold nuggets for yourself and for your own brand. All right. So now that you've got that, this is the very last piece that I love getting to. There's a book that you should read, and I'll put the link down in the description of this video called Story Brand. This is the SB7 framework by Donald Miller in the book called Story Brand. Once you have your story brand and you have your archetype and your everything dialed in, this is where you're gonna put that into action. Now, I want you to make I want to make sure I'm very, very clear about this. You are not the character, okay? You are the guide. You are the person. You are not the hero of the story. Your client is, your customer is, the person that you're trying to help. They are the character. So they are the character and they have a problem. You need to identify what that problem is. For me, I have an AI software that is an AI driven CRM and I'm helping companies that have all these different softwares and email marketing software and CRMs and Calendly and all these different things and I'm condensing it into one software, one program, giving them their time back and helping them eliminate employees. We're kind of giving the, the double middle fingers to a lot of these brands like Salesforce and saying we're doing things different. We're challenging the status quo, we're breaking the rules. So that is a big part of what I'm doing within my brand is we are going to be a hardcore rebel brand in the software space and make software fun because software is a boring space digital marketing is a boring space and a lot of times even the creative space the creative agencies can be a boring space so we want to make this fun we want to be entertaining and we're creating a brand right now so that's what our brand is going to be about and we know what the problems are that we're solving in the marketplace and we're going to stand in that firmly and we're never going to deviate from that the best brands never deviate from who they are so once they meet the guide which is you you know prospecting on social media youtube videos social content email, marketing, in-person events, wherever those areas are that you're finding these people and you're meeting these characters, you need to give them a plan. Okay, telling them what they should do or coming up with an idea is not a plan. You need to put a plan in place. If you don't understand how to create a plan, that is an area you need to focus in your business and start to develop a brand strategy and a marketing plan. These are two areas that I can help you with. If you need help in doing that or learning how to do that, you can reach out to me or watch more of my videos. Now, the next step is you're gonna call them to action. Hey. You're here right now and you want to get to here. In order for us to do that, we need to take this first step and that's called making them an offer and on the ultimate goal is an irresistible offer. You want to make them an offer so good that they feel stupid for saying no. Then that call to action is going to result them in either success, you can see here, or failure. Hopefully success, right? Because if you get them success, right? If you sell a course and you position your course only to sell it and they don't actually get the outcome that they signed up for, they're not gonna tell their friends and if they do, it's gonna be negative and you're not gonna be able to scale that course. But if you get people transformation through your courses, through your programs, through your trainings, through your, your designs, through your websites, through all the things that you're doing as a creative, that is what's going to carry it on. You wanna give your clients a story to tell. And this is an important part of my brand that I love to give my clients a story to tell. When somebody calls them up when they're sitting with me in a consult, they're like, what are you doing right now? They're like, I'm in this consult with this guy and I literally just was one of the most impactful things, not just in my business, but my whole life. They're telling their friends, their family, their colleagues, their coworkers and people how impactful the things that I'm doing for them are in their life. And that gives them a story to tell, oh, where are you at? Who is this person, right? So that's how I'm able to get a lot of referrals and really build a successful business. So with that all being said, um, I wanna make sure that there's not anything else here. I don't think there is, nope. And so with that all being said, this is the 12 brand archetypes. I hope you found this super helpful. I had to go through this very quickly. I can go a lot deeper into this. I can talk about just the archetypes for probably an hour at least, maybe two hours. Each of these archetypes has specific characteristics, logical, ethical, and emotional elements that I could go. But if you want more information on this, you want to learn more about this, you need help with planning, or you just want to come into my community and get to know me better, check out the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. We're doing some pretty incredible things. And we're going to start helping graphic designers, web designers, and motion designers just like you scale to $10,000 a month in 30 days. $10,000 a month in 30 days. This is no BS. This is straightforward. I have a proven person that I'm bringing onto my team that we're going to be able to help you do this. So if you have any questions about that, drop a comment down below. Say hi. I look forward to meeting you. And until then, I'm Adrian Boysell. And as always, keep looking out.